Hello. Hello. So I am really happy to actually have this conversation with you. So the first one is, who was Laura Pearls in your experience of her? Who was she for you? Who was Laura Pearls, who was she for me? It's a, she was one of the principal uh, people for me in Gestalt Therapy. Uh, I was thinking about this, what you, how to describe her to you from my perspective. Uh, I first uh, was exposed to Gestalt Therapy in the late 1970s, sort of as a drive-by experience. A friend of mine took me to a Gestalt Therapy, to a Laura Pearls workshop she gave somewhere um, in, uh, the country in Worcester, in Worcester County. I remember seeing her and she had, uh, it was at a time when uh, uh, she was worshiped uh, and she was in, in uh, actually it, was, it wasn't so much she was worshiped, but people who led workshops were. She was basically like a, a guru, I guess a guru. And she would be sitting there in the, in the middle of a room and, and there people sitting around her and people would stand up and go over to her to, to work. And she, she would, do her work in a sort of a gesture of, of magic. And mm -hmm. her, it struck me as her, was her, her quiet and gentle power. But at that point, uh, I was just coming into uh, to, to being interested in becoming a therapist, just beginning to be interested in gestalt therapy. I was coming at, uh, to it as a uh, outside the field, I was a lawyer. So I was just, just putting my fingers in the, in, the, uh, in the bowl and I was scared. And I, I was awed by both the, the dynamic in which they, people were setting her up as this kind of figure and, and, and uh, ingratiating themselves to her and her, uh, and her power it was given to her. And at the same time, the warmth and cleverness and, um, and the way she also accepted that position. Years later, I, was, I, I committed myself to becoming a Gestalt therapist and um, I trained it in a practicum with Patrick Kelly in the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. And Patrick was a patient of, of uh, Laura's and he encouraged me to join Laura's practicum. Uh, she was also frightening, but what came across to me substantially was her gentleness and her warmth and her grace. She led the group, not as anything frightening as I saw in that workshop that I think was a function of the time but this now was in the, in the early 1980s. Uh, but I mean by grace was the grace of a, of a dancer and, uh, and with a kind of a, a rhythm of a singer. She had, a, a, I remember uh, in her apartment, she had a piano in the, in the corner and she would introduce movement and dance in her work and her way of working with us it was as if she was uh, engaging with us in an aesthetic experience. Uh, there was kindness with her uh, in her work and there was uh, an edge. Uh, it was a combination of kindness and edge, which I always recognized in those early days with her. Also, she was standing on culture, uh, history, literature, poetry, some science, but it was her the connection to literature, music, and poetry that immediately struck me. She'd be listening to the music in a person's words, the grace in a person's movement, and introducing notions of German culture, German philosophy, that kind of held the work together for me and uh, uh, charmed me. And I needed that because of who I was. Uh, I studied with her for a few years back in the early 80s, and then I went off to elsewhere. I returned to uh, Laura, the late 80s. I was in her last group. I was in her last group probably oh, three years. And I mean by last group, I mean literally her last group. It was her last group. And in her, the, uh, she died at the end of the group. So we, in that last group, became very close members of the group. Uh, we. Uh, she was well and it began, but as the group progressed, she aged and uh, we experienced ourselves at the end as kind of holding her. Uh, I remember very, very clearly how, how that went. But again, she continued being graceful, empathic, sharp, um, witty, um, clear, 
and warm. Uh, uh, those are the things I took from her. But, but make no mistake about it, she was fierce. I remember one, uh, one group, we were, we, somebody was in the group uh, and nobody liked this person. We really didn't like this person. And we'd say to ourselves, when is Laura gonna get, how is Laura gonna tell this person that this person doesn't belong in the group? How is this gonna happen? And, uh, and we, would, you know, we, would, we would look at one another. And, and one day, uh, maybe four, four sessions in, um, Laura would look up and she had a way of looking down and looked up and looked around the group. And she had this kind of smile and she had these big cheeks. And she, would, she just rattled off a list of things that this person did over the last four sessions and looked him right in the eye. And, uh, and then he, she, looked, she looked like this. <laughs> and he just got up and walked out. And, uh, and you know, he said, this is the, that was the way she would deliver um, her gentleness and forcefulness at the same time. Uh, it was a, it was a, a lovely experience studying with Laura, and um, when I think about myself as a Gestalt therapist, um, each of the people, each of the persons I trained with, I got something different. Uh, when I say I got something different, each of them brought out something in me that was already there. Mm -hmm. and if, I don't think I could have stayed a Gestalt therapist without each of the people I trained with reinforcing something within me. And Laura reinforced uh, my appreciation for the grace of, the ther of therapy. Uh, Laura always paid attention to the emerging figure, the gracefulness of an emerging figure. And whenever we talk about the aesthetic of contacting, whenever anybody says anything about that, that comes from the Laura Pearls. Hmm. Laura Pearls paid attention to the aesthetic. It came from her background in uh, eurythmics with Dal Crow's dancing. It came from her her music. Mm -hmm. uh, she, had, she had the Beckstein piano in the background. She, sometimes we come in to, to uh, begin the group and she was playing Bach on the piano. She would talk about her experience in, in, the, uh, in Germany. She, uh, she was gymnasium trained. Uh, so that was very much figural in uh, that actually background in the groups that she was in, uh, she, that she uh, led, and the, tra and the, and the Gestalt therapy she uh, brought to, uh, in her training. There's another aspect of, of Laura, mm -hmm. was Laura as the, uh, as the queen of the New York Institute, the widow of the, the, widow of, of the king, of, of Fritz, and uh, for Fritz's bust, Bronze bust was in the in the room, in her living room, and it was very much looked like the, looked like the a, a bronze of Mussolini. Just looking at that, it's very funny. Mm -hmm. But he, she, when I joined the New York Institute, there was Laura, and she was very much the queen, and uh, she was the president for life. I think I told you before we started, mm -hmm. and uh, she would be at the meetings, and nobody would ever disagree with her. Mm -hmm. She would hardly say anything. But when she spoke, the room would be quiet. <laughs> that, that was very, here it is this egalitarian psychotherapy, this non-hierarchical psychotherapy, and it had a queen. Hmm. Now this may be this young Dan, you know, just getting, just cutting his teeth in Gestalt therapy. But uh, there's a video that Bud Feeder had of, of, uh, of a presentation that Laura gave the Institute. And you could see me in a choir, and it, it, Laura Pearls did it. as a quote, every life is a, a novel or every novel is something. And there's, uh, there's a picture of me uh, in the video as a, and I asked, I'm asking a question. And I remember how terrified I was before I asked that question. And it was in a Laura meeting. And you could see the people sitting around her. And I remember each of those people being her ladies in waiting and gentlemen in waiting. Mm -hmm. So she was a, uh, quite the figure at the Institute. Hmm. Uh, uh, resident for life. Hmm. Right. So that, I mean, that was the first question, which was really, you know, who was she for you? Yeah. And you kind of went into the, the second point, which is really, what do you feel that she gave you as a therapist or that oh, yeah. you got from her as a therapist? Yeah. 
I mean, a lot of the ideas that are basic to how I trained as a gestalt therapist came from Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, the notion of support for contacting is very mm -hmm. much Laura. The whole notion of the aesthetic criterion is very much or, uh, inspired by Laura. Mm -hmm. Is there something that kind of encapsulates a really important aspect of your experience with her? Well, the, mo the moment when she, she got rid of that person in the group, mm -hmm. waited for the certain moment in which the group could support that, mm -hmm. that, um, that delivery of her power mm -hmm. in such a way that he, um, um, it, it, he, um, there, was no, there was no alternative, but he saw that, he, that, that that was an intervention that was striking. It was mm -hmm. one moment that I was impressed by. But um, that gave me a sense of, of a different sense of her. But I, in the, I don't have any, nothing comes to mind readily about that. I mean, there were moments of her, of her at her, uh, uh, there was a gala for her 80th birthday, 75th birthday, where she spoke and there's a, that she, uh, she had a, bro a broken leg, she had cr uh, crutches where she was, her, she presented herself with a lot of grace and dignity. And that the grace, the, when you think about gestalt therapy sometimes, I think about it as a kind of a, uh, a raw clumsiness, a raw, a raw uh, lack of gracefulness mm -hmm. where people can be you know, kind of uh, sort, of a, sort of a trite way to say a, a hippie rawness. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about Laura, you, you, I think about a, a gracefulness and refinement at a time when um, well, not, we're talking about the eighties when people weren't necessarily that way, but she was mannered and well-mannered and, uh, and graceful mm. and literate and, and articulate. And that was a, a, a good figurehead for the New York Institute and a good model for a kind of gestalt therapy, uh, the way she presented herself. Hmm. Uh, um, I, am, I am idealizing her. So I'm saying on the other side, there's a big mistake because Laura was not a saint. There's, okay. a, there's a way of putting, now let me, let me erase everything I just said, because mm -hmm. there's a tendency, and you'll see this in the Laura Pearls film that was that Christoph Weber put together of making mm -hmm. Laura into a saint. She was not. She mm -hmm. was also a bitch. She, she, and she could, she could very well be one. She was also bitchy to that guy in the group. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not a little bit too good. Uh, there's a story in Gestalt therapy that, that Fritz went off to the West Coast, abandoned Laura and the children, and, and she was the dear darling mother and, and, and Fritz went off and, and it was a sexual philanderer. Well, Laura had as much sex on the East Coast with as many men as she, she wanted and, and, and worked her way through the New York Institute and, and, uh, uh, and it was surrounded by her gay boys and, 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 tr and had sex with her gay boys too. And I think she, she stopped doing it just about she was working her way to me, but, 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 but at that certain point in her life. So she also had quite a life. So there's not exactly, you know, there's the, mm -hmm. the, the Laura and then there's the, there's the wild frisk. So you, you got these things going on here. So uh, let's not idealize. Yeah, no, no, it sounds like it, it balances the story. I, I don't know uh, how much uh, of a favor that does to Gestalt therapy on either coast, but no, it, 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 it does. <laughs> it's the human it story. It humanizes. Okay? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it humanizes. And so they were, and, and uh, I was very close friends with Renata, you know, her, her daughter. Mm -hmm. So I also have that sense of, of, of the parenting, of, of close to the Pearls family. Mm -hmm. So I got some of that picture. Hmm. Interesting. But, I, but it's, it's made it very clear that, that the tendency to, to idealize Laura is, uh, is, uh, uh, has to be watched out for. And I think Laura would probably make sure that that was known too. Okay. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, this is not really like a tribute so much. It's just yeah. curiosity because I've never asked these people these questions. So, yeah. 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 Do you think, <laughs> do you think there's anything else that um, you would like to sort of leave on record as this oh, is how I, you I, remember, Laura? The things I just said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. okay. <laughs> leave okay. on record? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I don't think that I could be the gestalt therapist I am today without having been trained by Laura. 
and that I was very, very pleased, that, uh, uh, honored uh, to be uh, been part of the very last group of people who, who were with Laura towards the end. There were about three or four of us who were very close to her mm -hmm. and had her trust and had her respect. And that having her respect, uh, having her uh, explicit respect, is something I treasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 to the extent I feel good about myself as a Gestalt therapist, it's because I know I had her respect. And that was um, very, it was and is very important to me. Uh, I think she was, uh, she embodied and is some of the best in gestalt therapy. Um, she's no, she's uh, not known as the most uh, uh, well thought through clinician, I mean, th theoretician of gestalt therapy, mm -hmm. but what she did embody was um, and, and uh, think through was enough of the theory in an embodied, uh, aesthetic practice that um, cannot you cannot practice as far as I'm concerned you cannot practice gestalt therapy in a full way without mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm glad to be one of the people who's continuing to bring this forward and expanding this you know, across the landscape hopefully and mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope I do her honor and continue to do her honor uh, in my own way and and in the and continue with the people I've also trained with and, uh, and, and it was a, it's also, I have to say, it's a privilege to also have known her daughter, Renata, it's mm -hmm. her character too. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, for now, is it okay if we leave this here? I, oh, sure. I would like to hear a lot more, but I'm, I'm experimenting to see. I'm glad to be part of your experiment. Heather, to see uh, where this goes. Uh, I feel happy that you asked me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>